Greetings, Poké fans! Michael here, and Pokémon Scarlet and Violet are certain to bring many new Pokémon, some of which are likely to be based on animals or mythical creatures that have never had Pokémon versions before. So I asked you all on my community tab what animals or mythical creatures you wanted to see get Pokémon versions, and I did also say if you really wanted to see like another butterfly, that's fine. And I'm gonna be reacting to your replies. Wario, a celebrity here. It's Wario time. I'd love to see one based on the Elysia Clor... Let's try that again. Elysia Chlorotica. <laughs> Oh, okay, now it's a little weird. Which is a sea slug that can photosynthesize, could be grass water, and have an ability where if it's sunny, it could get either a boost in power or gain a small amount of HP each turn. I think it'd be really cool and really unique. You could also just give it like chlorophyll. But let's look up a picture of this thing. Whoa, this is so cool. It's a small to medium sized species of green sea slug, a marine branch. Gastropod mollusk. The sea slug superficially resembles a nudibranch, yet it does not belong to that clade of gastropods. Some members of this group use chloroplasts from the algae they eat for photosynthesis, a phenomenon known as kleptoplasty. Ha! <laughs> Cause it's stealing the chloroplasts. Solar powered sea slug. That's super cool. I would definitely love to see a Pokemon like this. Another grass water would be interesting for sure too. And this would be a really unique and interesting way to do it. I do believe a uh, Lakita Chica Xica. I don't know how to say that. Line of mythical Pokemon would be extremely fitting for the Spanish region, although it is of Catalonian origin. Cause all I'm thinking of is the, is it the Catalonia wine mixer? Oh no, it's Catalina wine mixer. Okay, not the same thing. It's a region in Northeastern Spain where Barcelona is. There's an interesting element to this half mule slash dragon serpent like sneaky snake that dwells in the highest of mountains who is antagonized by the people but grows to become a protector well i'm certainly googling this it's a dragon that appears amongst the legends of catalonia beginning in 1890 are there any images that aren't just the, the puppets mostly the puppets but i am interested maybe they do like the pseudo as this, I'd rather them not. As we've discussed, I want the pseudo to not be dragon type. There needs to be a Kiwi or Kakapo Pokemon, both flightless birds native to New Zealand, the Kakapo being the world's only flightless parent. Parrot. God, I cannot talk today. Our country gets no representation in the game, so to be fair, most countries haven't been at all represented. TBH, I was hoping this region would be based on India. I need those snakes, elephants, and legendary Pokemon alluding to the religions of India. Also, I've always found the Indian culture very interesting. Would have loved to experience in a Pokemon game with Indian-based Pokemon. I mean, yeah, I feel similarly to you. Um, I hope Gen 10. Wow. That's, that's the next one after this one. Anyways, I hope Gen 10 goes uh, away from Europe or Japan, or the United States. But Kiwis and Kakapos sound cute. I know what a Kiwi looks like. This is a Photoshop. But yeah, in reality, they're these adorable little things. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe them other than like fuzzballs with feet and a stick on their face. And look, some people have designed some Kiwi fake Pokemon. I'm not sure what a Kakapo looks like though. It it certainly looks like a parrot. This is someone's Kakapo Pokemon. I think that looks pretty good. There are some really amazing mythological creatures that would be great inspirations for Pokemon. It's hard to pick one. I think I'd have to say I'd love to see a Quetzal Quattle or cockatrice inspired Pokemon? Cockatrice is ringing a bell. Quetzalcoatl, definitely a feathered serpent, extremely cool. And then a cockatrice is like a rooster and a dragon? Yeah, that's what it is. These are weird looking dudes, I gotta say. I feel like I designed a Pokemon when I was little based on this thing, but I'm not sure. I think I prefer Quetzalcoatl over Cockatrice, but both would be really interesting. This is super cool. Pokemon Sage. That's right, it's legendary is a Quetzalcoatl. You got statue form and then you've got space form, which is crazy and very cool. Definitely want to see an official one. Oh, that's right. Delta Pidgeot from, I think that's Insurgents. That's a cockatrice inspired Pokemon. I'd love to see one on the Hippocampus. A colorful horse that lives in the sea from Greek myth. Yeah, they're like half horse, half they're like horse mermaids, basically. I know about them from the Percy Jackson series. I went to a trivia night a couple weeks ago where the theme around was mythical creatures and I was disappointed that there was not a trivia question that was, what half horse, half fish mythical creature shares its name with a part of the brain? And I would have been like, it's a hippocampus. Ha ha, it is I, Grunty Boar. Hey dude, and why are you taking off your shirt? I'm beginning my journey to become a fitness influencer. And you can't be a proper fitness influencer without being half naked. Um. Okay, but why? Well, whenever I've exercised in the past and used my Raycon earbuds, the sponsor of today's video, I've been amazed at how well they stay in my ears. Look at this. Ah! 
Right, that's because of their optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. So they're really comfortable and won't budge. But that doesn't explain the leap to fitness influencer. Well, you see, when listening to my exercise tunes with my Raycons, the sound quality is so excellent at half the price of other premium audio brands, mind you, that I get uncontrollably pumped up. I figured I would use this energy to sculpt myself into the perfect physique and make fitness influencer money from it. I feel like there's more to it than that, but you're definitely right about Raycon earbuds. Eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life, plus everything else, means it's not surprising that they have over 48,000 five star reviews. Actually, out of curiosity, what is your go to workout music that gets you so insanely pumped? I'll send you a link. Okay, I'll check it out. You know, oddly, this is very on brand for you. It goes so hard. As does going to the link in the description below or buyraycon.com slash MHATV and getting 15% off your purchase. Now, off to continue my shred quest. Ta-ta! I think a water dragon or water fairy would be really cool. I think water fairy would make more sense just because like there's no like reptilian aspects of a hippocampus, but I mean, I feel like they could do a lot of different things, but probably water type. Yeah, see, basically, like I said, horse mermaids. Although it occurs to me that it's like the horse mermaids are like with their, their seahorses. <laughs> I feel like it'd be different enough for them to do a cool Pokemon. Here's a picture of a hippocampus from the Percy Jackson Sea of Monsters movie. Uh, don't watch it. This movie and the first one, Soiled the masterpiece of the Percy Jackson series. But I'm glad they're making a TV show with Rick Riordan involved. Apparently Rick Riordan read the script for the first one and was like, I'm never watching this. <laughs> so he agrees that these are garbage. Oh, apparently the water starter from Pokemon Uranium is based on Hippocampus. I was not aware of that. I guess because it is a horse that can swim. I was just thrown off by not having a mermaid tail. Well, that thing is super unique and cool. Whoa, that thing's hardcore. As a Canadian, I'd love to see a moose Pokemon. Somebody said it. Moose are such a big deal in the colder reaches of the Americas. They're everywhere. They're huge. And yet somehow we've never gotten a Pokemon. That's a moose. I feel like there's so much potential there. Like you could have an ice type moose with antlers made of ice or a grass moose covered in moss. I like this one because the words moose and moss are pretty similar, so it's a pun name waiting to happen. You call it a... Moss? Plus they're huge and kind of scary. Super scary. Super scary. Keep your darn distance. Look at this thing. It is significantly taller than a car. I'm trying to find one where it's like more next to people. Moose size comparison. They're like way bigger than horses. Like, look how badass this thing is. Look at this, dark and windy. You know him, he made a moose Pokemon. This thing looks pretty dope. This is an interesting take on a moose design, making it bipedal and with claws. Oh, hey, look, <laughs> I was just searched moose fake mod and then a thumbnail for a video I made in like, what, 2000? 14, 15? That's right, it's here, look at that. I would love to see one based on the Urko. The Urko is a canine hybrid that lives in the ocean depths and has horns and dragging chains. Be a dark or ghost type since it was considered to be an omen of death. That sounds right. It could also have some ghost binding move that also counts as a sound based move since the Urko drags the chains noisily while howling. Ooh, yikes. Also, also yikes, but in like a different way. I don't know about this one. <laughs> okay, well, all right, that, that looks pretty cool. But to me, it just seems like a dog with horns that's wielding chains. Although maybe that'd be a really cool like ghost steel Pokemon. I would love it if they had a red panda Pokemon. Not sure it would really fit with Scarlet and Violet's theme though. I just love red pandas and not just because of the new Pixar movie. I've just adored these creatures forever and really love it if they were included in the future of Pokemon. I'm definitely down. Red pandas are adorable. Just look at it. It's so happy. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Wait, hold on. This might be crazy, but let's look at baby red pandas. Oh my God. <laughs> Their faces are just such a small part of their heads. I have no idea who designed the or orange Towie or something, but this is fire. Stuffle appears to be based on the red panda. Well, stuffed animals such as teddy bears. Really though? I guess it's ears. 
But like, it's, well, I mean, we could get another one. It's electric, but it looks really cool. A Pokemon based on a drop bear would be really cool. Pokemon that looks cute at first glance, but when you get close, turns out to be a beast. Plus would finally add some more Australian representation. What is a drop bear? A fictional Australian marsupial in the form of a large carnivorous koala said to fall upon its prey from treetops. I mean, it would just be another koala Pokemon with like teeth. I'm gonna say no to this one. I'm from the Nordics and I would love to see more Arctic or subarctic creatures being represented. Love a moose Pokemon? Yes. And an ice steel lynx Pokemon? I'm down for a lynx. Although people say Luxray is a lynx, which is like, I feel like it's a lot more like a lion. Lynxes? Very cool. Very majestic looking cold weather cats. Also so cute when it is a baby. Look at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, if yeah, if you, if you search Lynx Pokemon, it's a uh, gives you a lot of the Shanks line, which I still f I'm not totally convinced about that. Does Shanks get its name from Shine and Lynx? Potentially, but it doesn't have the same look. You know, it doesn't have like the, the hair. You know what I mean? Like the Lynx face, where it's got the Hmm, Shanks don't got that. I want to see more dinosaurs since they're pretty cool, like a stegosaurus mainly, yes. Or even a triceratops or long neck dino. We're not getting triceratops or long neck dino because Bastiodon and Aurorus, while not specifically triceratops, they, they kind of encompass that whole group. You know, Bastiodon encompasses the, the shield faced dinosaurs and Aurorus encompasses all the long neck dinosaurs, but a Stegosaurus, yes. I feel like I designed some Pokemon when I was little that were based on the Stegosaurus. I'd, I'd like to see a Stegosaurus Pokemon where the spines are like something interesting. Like they could be stones if it's a rock type. They could be steel blades if it's a steel type. They could be magic movies if it's a fairy type, I don't know. They could be cacti. If it's a grass type, look at that. They could be solar panels for an electric type, see? There's so many things you could do with the Stegosaurus Pokemon. I really want a peacock. There are such elegant birds and I'm really surprised they haven't made a Pokemon based on that. I agree. That's another one like the moose that I'm like kind of surprised it hasn't happened yet. Cause like, look at all the cool ways you could do it. Like with a Stegosaurus spike, the fan could be a lot of different things. It could even be space. You could do a lot with it. You can make it all blades. Give me a Pokemon covered in knives. I'm still holding out for a Pegasus Pokemon. Yes, yeah, seriously. How did we not get like any Pegasus Pokemon this entire time? I feel like Rapidash having gotten a Mega or Galarian Rapidash having been a Pegasus, I feel like both of those would have worked really well, but I am personally holding out hope for a Pegasus Substrika evolution. Because I love Substrika, but it's not very good. But if they buffed its stats and made it a flying type, that'd be really cool. Honestly, I'd want another Hercules Beetle or something like that. We have multiple Stag Beetle and Mantis Pokemon, given how popular those Beetles are in Japan, I'm surprised there aren't more of them. I mean, we've got both Pinsir and Heracross. We've got two bug Pokemon, big something or others on their head that they use to throw other bug Pokemon. I feel like you don't really need more. I really like Griffins, so it'd be cool to see a Pokemon like that. Definitely agree. There's just so many cool ways to do a Griffin. That's another mythical creature. I can't believe we don't have a Pokemon yet. Pegasus and Griffins. I'd love to see a Kelpie. They're from Scottish folklore. They make cries that sound like people drowning to lure other people into the water to capture them. Sounds like an actual Pokedex entry when you think about it. Yeah, it does. Uh, this is a dog. Okay, here we go. This, this kind of looks like a Hippocampus Bameen or just a horse. A Pokemon based off the Mothman would be interesting to see being mysterious bug psychic type that appears before a disaster of some kind. Mothman, relatively well-known myth. And people have made some Mothman Pokemons like this extremely exquisite thing. <laughs> but more seriously, like this one is super dope. Well, this is most probably not gonna come in Scarlet and Violet. I'd love to see an Arvok evolution based on a Fofis or the Naga. What is a Fofis? Wait, oh, this is the big evil serpent from Egyptian mythology. It's got a couple different names. What would the design be like though? Cause it would, would it just be like a meaner snake? The Naga, I'm not familiar with this. It's from Hindu mythology. A member of a class of mythical semi-divine beings, half human, half cobra. Oh, Ooh, I don't know if I want Arbok to get a human half. I've always thought hummingbirds were really cool, so I'd like to see a Pokemon based on that. That's another great one. Yes, absolutely. And it's like super fast. There's some fan game out there where like one of the starters is a hummingbird. Oh, it's Pokemon Sage. Look at that, Florissum. Isn't that a cool design? Lightning's not great, but it's a cool design. I want a 
Wendigo. Wendigo to the store to miss the most crowds. Wendigo are these awesome mythological creatures that lurk in the woods and eat people. Lovely. In some cultures, there are people who tried... This is getting a little intense. While the mythos would definitely have to be toned down to be more like the lore behind Frostlass, I feel like a Wendigo Pokemon would be a perfect contender for a poison ice type. Things that are mostly found in colder forests and are associated with disease. Interesting. These things are nasty looking. My God. What is, what is this? What is this? Okay, all right. Was freaking me out in the realistic art, but this is dope. All right. I've accepted that I would take a Wendigo Pokemon. I feel like they could good, do a good job of toning that down. <laughs> My hope for Gen 9's regional bug is for it to be based off of Pine Processionary Caterpillars. A caterpillar train evolving into a massive cocoon and then dozens of moths grouped together sounds absolutely awesome. What? They cause economic damage in carnivorous forests. Kind of gross to be perfectly honest with you. Been really interested in seeing a Pokemon based on a peacock. Yep, already discussed that. Each individual feather looking like a multicolored prism or shard. That would be really awesome. Additionally, I think it would be cool if they added a satyr based Pokemon or another goat Pokemon. R.I.P. Go Goat. R.I.P. Go Goat. I mean, Go Goat still exists. It's just like it's not appeared anywhere but X and Y. <laughs> I really love prehistoric creatures. A normal ground Paraceratherium. The tallest land mammal would be instantly on my team. Holy good gosh. It's like a rhino, elephant, and giraffe got fused. Cool. Oviraptor as well. Oh, I know this one. Yeah, it's got the crest on the top of its head. That'd be cool. A Pokemon based on a Cerberus or Chimera would be dope. Equally something based on Greek mythology. Yeah, that's another one. I'm surprised we haven't gotten a Cerberus Pokemon. We got lots of like single-headed dogs. I really want to see a golden crowned flying fox Pokemon. Since they're pretty badass and they benefit the environment, a grass flying would suit it, I think. They often spit out seeds from the fruits they ate during flight, spreading the fruits to grow across the land, plus Team Sky. Oh, it's a fruit bat. I wouldn't get your hopes up for this. We've already got the Crobat line. And then the Noivern and Noibat line are like a lot more like fruit bats. So I am not optimistic they would do this. I personally think it would be cool to see a mink. Could be a water type or a normal type. I'd also love to see a Selenodon. Is that a big dinosaur? No, it's not. It's a shrew thing. They're small yet venomous. Either way, any and all that isn't particularly widely known would be cool. All right. I'd really want to see something based off a manticore. I think it would be an interesting if you got a signature move that allowed it to shoot toxic spikes from its tail. They might be able to make a regional variant of Scorapi or Drapion. Maybe making them into a fire poison type with fire being the lion aspect. Yeah, manticores are dope. A lion with scorpion powers and usually wings. Like, yeah, that would be awesome. There's a, lots of different fake mon designs people have done, so I feel like they could do a pretty cool one. Oh, that's right. I feel like in a video years ago, I discussed the idea for a mega Luxray that was manticore inspired. And obviously we're not getting any megas probably ever again, but a new manticore Pokemon, I'm definitely down for. That's where I'm gonna wrap it up for this video. Let me know down in the comments below if there's any other animals or mythical creatures that you wanna see get Pokemon versions. And thank you so much for watching. With an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. If you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.